I just completed 30 days raw vegan and I wanted to share a little bit about why I started this cleanse, how I feel now and what's next. So if you haven't tuned into my channel before, my name is Renee. I go by the Helpful Digital Marketer. I do make content about business, about life, about mental health. And now I guess I make videos about wellness. I think it all is related, like how we perform in business, how our mental health is, all stems from what we fuel our body with. So I wanna share a little bit about my journey. I just did 30 days. So I started the cleanse September 1st. And originally I was only thinking I was gonna do a 10 day smoothie cleanse. And I'll be drinking throughout because still doing the cleanse. So I still need like my juices and things like that. But originally it started out, y'all. I was like, okay, I'm going to do a cute little 10 day cleanse. You know what I'm saying? Because I had been traveling. So I was in Europe and I was eating a lot of dairy. I was drinking spritz, y'all. I was spritzing my life. I was just having a ball. I was having it up. And my body was not feeling good. I knew when I was in Italy that I needed to do a cleanse because my eczema had gotten so bad. My brain fog. I was not able to focus on work. Like I was struggling. And is any, if you know me, like I love working. So if I'm having a hard time working, something is wrong. There were, the signs were there, you know what I mean? So I was prayerful September 1st. I knew I was gonna do a 10 day cleanse and be done. And when I started the cleanse, I just, I was really prayerful going into it. And the first three days of the cleanse, I just felt like God was like, this is not a, a temporary fix. Like you run out of temporary fixes. It's time for you to transform your life. That's crazy because definitely thought we were talking about 10 days. Wasn't was it into the transformer that you're that you're speaking of. It was never getting transformed. It was given it was giving 10 days and then I get back to Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Um, I can, but I don't. So I, in this process, like in the first 10 days, I really had to surrender to the idea of letting go of this version of myself. And one of the reasons that really motivated me to do the cleanse was that I was just not feeling well. I'm gonna add some videos of how my eczema looks. My eczema actually is still really bad, even after the 30 days, and that's because I did not know that nuts were one of my triggers. I thought peanuts were, and I wasn't eating peanuts, but I was terrible at that. Was that? <laughs> and they, was, they were clearly inflaming my body. And so one of the things that I was saying, and I, I didn't quantify how many things I'm gonna share in this video, but I would say the first thing that I noticed is when you cut back on all of the things that you're eating, it's really easy to identify what is helping your body and your mood and what is not. So what's replenishing you and what's taking from you. And for me personally, I was eating a lot of the same meals. In the beginning, I was only doing smoothies. So I was doing blueberries, mangoes, strawberries. I would do spinach or kale with coconut water and I would drink those smoothies all day. And I would drink tea as well but that would be my meals. And during those days, my eczema was the most relaxed and I think it was actually healing. Now, after the 10 days, I introduced more foods that I was actually eating. So I was eating kale salad with like lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, red onions, lime. I was doing hemp seeds and I was doing a lot of pistachio because once you start doing your raw vegan thing, you're kind of trying to find like your go-to foods. What I noticed is my skin was going crazy, but in my mind, I'm thinking I'm raw vegan. These are healthy, all natural foods. I was buying organic. Um, these are all natural foods. And so I just, I didn't think too deeply about it until the last two weeks of the cleanse, I was in so much pain from my skin, 
just burning. And if you have eczema, you know what I mean? That burning sensation, like that wakes you up at night and you feel like you are experiencing withdrawal. Like you're like an addict and you're scratching for dear life. Like it's that bad. This is some watermelon juice and mint. But yeah, the last two weeks has been unbearable. And I prayed. I prayed while I was stretching the other day. And I was like, Lord, it's actually on my 30th day. I was like, Lord, I'm looking at my skin and it's not healed. Right? And you told me to transform. No, but seriously, I was, I was looking at my skin and I was really excited for the milestone. But I was just, I had to sit and really confront the disappointment that I felt. Like I was like, baby, I done gave up Chick-fil-A. Do you order family? I need you to move mountain. I need you to do what only you can do. Like I was disappointed because I felt like I had given and had saved to do this journey. And I thought at the end, the skin was gonna be skinned. And it wasn't, it was actually worse. And so one of the scriptures that has that I've been meditating on so much is Romans 8 and 25, where it says like, if we have hope, right? If we hope for things that we, cannot see, then with patience must we wait for it. Like I'm paraphrasing, but essentially it's like, baby, if you knew that your skin was getting better every day, you wouldn't really have to have hope in healing. You really wouldn't have to have hope in God. You really wouldn't have to pray about it because if you can see it, then you really don't have to hope for it. And so this journey has really been one of like a testing of my faith, of an understanding of, of who God is and how good he is and how he works in ways that only he can work. Because in my mind, I'm like, I did the 30 days. This thing will be clear. It doesn't work like that. And I think one of the things too that we miss sometimes when we try to box in what God can do for us is like, I gave you 30 days to move and, and now I'm disappointed that you didn't do it. But what I failed to realize is that in the 30 days, I've been able to identify what I can and cannot eat. Before this journey, I did not know why my body was reacting in certain ways or what was deeply affecting my body. And knowing that all nuts are a red flag for my body at this point, I'm thinking about all the times I was drinking almond milk. I was drinking cashew milk. I was drinking all of these milk because they were a dairy alternative, but they were still tearing my skin up. And had I not committed to doing this journey, to really sitting with my body, to be prayerful and mindful, I wouldn't have the answers that I have now. And one of the prayers that I prayed before starting this journey was that I would be able to give myself answers that I haven't had in the past. Because a lot of the times I'm moving through life and I'm like, I don't know why I feel like this. I don't know why I feel so off. I don't know why things are just not aligned. And a lot of this journey has been about getting the answers for the questions that I've had for a long time. And I think that sometimes if we confuse receiving the answers as a quick fix for the problem, we'll always be disappointed. And now I'm like, okay, the first 30 days brought me this clarity. Now in the next 30 days, I can use this clarity to again, build my body back up. And so, I think that's the second takeaway is you will get clarity in so many levels and so many ways. I think one of the other things that's been really special about this journey for me is being sober minded. I was drinking so much like, and not even like binge drinking cause I'm really not a good drinker y'all. Like to me, I'm like two drinks, it's like drinking a lot for me personally but I was drinking on such a consistent basis because I was traveling so much this summer. And so I think not having alcohol, not doing any kind of cannabis at all, really being sober minded and grounded in myself, not using anything to escape at all has been uncomfortable at time, but but such a refreshing moment for me. And I think that this journey has brought me more than I could have ever imagined. You know what I mean? Like I feel like had my skin cleared up in the first 14 days, I would have stopped. And had I had stopped, I would have missed all of it. All of the discipline that I have accumulated, all of the balance that I now have, all of the peace, all of the relaxation that I have. I'm just in a different space. 
like. If you are thinking about doing this, really start out with the mindset to discover what is gonna work well for you. And I did a lot of research over time. I don't think I did it all before I started, but as I started, I felt like starting gave me the fuel I needed to do more research. So as I was preparing my meals, I was watching more raw vegans. I was watching more interviews. I can link some of the, the videos I watched during my journey to keep me motivated and grounded and also just raise awareness for me of how people were maintaining this lifestyle for years. Because in the first week, you're gonna be like, because in the first, I'm trying to tell you, vividly I remember the third day, just laying on my bed, could you get like this, like it goes up and down, right? Like you start and you have this like energy boost and you're like, I'm better than everyone. Like I'm taking care of my body. I was so healthy. And then you have the, you peak and then you have a, a low where you're just like, you know, feeling like Jesus, like if let this cup pass, take this cup for me. Like I just went to play. You have these lower moments where you're just like, baby, I know what I said. I changed my mind and I really had to just empty myself, like empty myself. So I would say like, give yourself time because it's really not normal to wake up and be like, oh, I'm finna eat today smoothies and juices, right? And I would say I had to give myself time to be in the house because a lot of the time I was really exhausted. The first two weeks I was exhausted. I delayed my travel. I stayed in one location and I was home. I was working from home. I was home a lot because I used, you're using the bathroom a lot and you need to, you need to eat regularly until your body adjusts. So you're going to be using the bathroom a lot. You're going to be going to the bathroom a lot. You're going to be prepping a lot of your food and you're going to I think as you prep your food too, one of the biggest takeaways is how much patience you get from this journey. As someone who is an entrepreneur who's always working and not finding time to make meals, always looking for something fast and on the go, this has grounded me because I have to take the time to fuel my body and it cannot be something fast because I need to give myself the best. And this journey makes you prioritize yourself. Like it forces you to, because I have to massage my kale. I have to make my salad dressing. I have to juice these fruit. I have to wash the fruit. It makes you make yourself a priority. And for the first time in my life, I can tell you, I am what's most important in my life. Not my business, not my clients, not my family, of course, Jesus. I would say the last thing for me is getting a juicer was the game changer for me. I had a juicer before I packed up my bags and left Atlanta and moved to Columbia, but I didn't buy a juicer after that because my juicer was in storage. And as I began watching more again, I dove deep into this lifestyle I accepted that this was a transformation happening in my life. A lot of the raw vegans are juicing daily and I just knew it was something I needed to do. Cheers. And this was really the best thing for me because you will get tired of eating smoothies, baby, I got tired. But to me, I used to juice before so I never get tired of juices. I love drinking juices every day. So I purchased a Haram juicer and that juicer is approximately eight pounds. I travel with this juicer. Like, yeah, y'all, I pack it in my bag. Like it came with me from Atlanta. It came with me to Philly, to Dallas. Like I pack my juicer, I'm not playing. Like if you truly feel like this is something God is calling you to do to transform your life, you have to have a different level of commitment. And that's what I really learned. I guess it's like, what is this, the fourth thing? What are we at, y'all? I don't know. I really didn't plan this video. I did my morning stretch and then I just was like, I need to record this now because I'm getting a lot of questions on Twitter. And I also feel like what I'm doing right now is bigger than me. Baby, I t I'm trying to tell you, you couldn't pay me to think that this was what I would be doing at the end of the year. I'm surprised, but not surprised because the way that I asked God to show me the world this year, I feel like he needed to transform me 
so that I could be at a level to receive the world that he has for me. Because I've been living in the world. I've been of the world. But when I asked him to show me the world, he's like, okay, baby, we need to transform you. So anyway, I don't know what I was saying at all. Like, I have no clue. But the juicer is clutch. I'm going to link it down below. It's not a referral link. I don't even think I have a referral link. But it's a great juicer. I purchased it on Labor Day. So I think it was like a little bit cheaper, but really great, really helpful. I juice all the time. I'm happy to share some of my juice recipes. Just comment down below if you would like that. And I don't know how long this video is, probably longer than I anticipated, but I did want to film this before I got too far in my journey. Like I said, this is day 32 of my raw vegan cleanse. I've learned that I can't do any nuts at all, so I won't be eating avocados or cashews. So sad. I mean, not avocados. Pistachi, pistachios or cashews, which like, I am sad about it. I'm not gonna lie. Cause when you're on a raw vegan, you're like, I just want a little crunch. Like you just want, you just want a little crunch, you know? Can't have potato chips or like, you like, I need something, Jesus, please. I'm about to be eating peppers, cheese. But um, I'm just committed to healing my body. And if you all want to know more about my eczema journey, the development of that, this is what it currently looks like. I was like, I'm very embarrassed to share this. I felt defeated, you know, day 30. But I feel like this is part of my testimony is sharing that sometimes the journey looks differently than what we anticipated or even what we planned. But we do have to trust that if we hope for the things we see not, then with patience, must we wait for it. And I am willing to wait for the things I see not. So I pray that this reaches whoever it needs to reach. I pray that if you are waiting on a sign that you would surrender to this, that you would accept this calling I feel led to pray for whoever it is on the other end of this video that God, you would reach him, you would reach her, you would give them a sense of peace and confidence in walking through this journey with you, Lord, that you would give them everything that they need to begin and everything that they need to proceed and everything that they need to be victorious. And Lord, I just pray now for every disease, every sickness, every ailment, everything in their bloodline, Lord. I pray now the miracle and the anointing of a reversal. Lord, we thank you because we know that you are a miracle worker. We thank you because we know that what precedes our obedience is things that we could not hope for, that we could not dream for, that we could never even imagine. And so, God, I thank you for even using me to reach those who might feel lost right now, who might feel abandoned right now, who might feel weak right now, who might feel lost right now, who might feel down, depressed, and overwhelmed. Lord, I pray that the spirit that you have rested on me of strength, of light, of love, of patience, of kindness. Lord, that it just reaches them through this video. Let their heart be lighter. Let their days be full with joy. And may you give them the peace that you've given me. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm, I'm so prayerful right now for whoever it is who needed this. God interrupted my whole days because today I was supposed to, to plan video content and it was like, no, record the video. <laughs> so whoever it is for, I, I just pray peace and blessings to you. Accept the call. We can do this. I believe in you. Believe in yourself. I'm excited for you to start your journey. Bye-bye.